Make sure you subscribe to our channel by clicking on the red subscribe button. And to never miss another lecture from Miracle, hit the bell icon to get regular updates on English literature. Hello and welcome to Miracle English Language and Literature Institute. I'm Professor Abha Sharma and today I'm going to take up the very famous epical poem of T.S. Eliot, The Wasteland. Many of you have requested me to take up this so I'm working on your request. T.S. Eliot, the prominent new critic, along with F.R. Lewis and I.A. Richards, who introduced new criticism and the greatest writer of English literature. He's written Wasteland, Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock, Murder in the Cathedral, and many others. He got the Nobel Prize in 1948, and his major work, which made him famous, is The Wasteland, which was published in 1922, the same time when Ulysses of uh, James Joyce was published. T.S. Eliot was born in 1888 at St. Louis, Missouri, America. Most of his education was completed there in America itself and his uh, uh, dissertation on philosophy was also done from Harvard but then he could not take up the exams because of the break of the First World War in uh, 1914. So he, afterwards he shifted to England and lived most of his adult life in England. He was in a way very uh, guilty of his forefathers living in America. So he wanted to go back to his Anglo-Saxon origin. That's why he shifted to England permanently. And there he wrote according to the modern scenario. He felt very dejected seeing the life changed during the modern period and that's why he wrote this epical poem The Wasteland. He met uh, Ezra Pound and who was also responsible for his poetic grooming and most of the part of uh, the Wasteland is edited by Ezra Pound. Actually, when he wrote this, when he finished up his Wasteland, he sent it to his friend Ezra Pound to edit it. And Ezra Pound returned it back saying that he could not understand a word from this, so he wants the proper reference. So, Elliot gave the references to each line because it's a fragmented kind of poem. It is according to the stream of consciousness of the writer. So, how could the other person understand? He sent all the details and the references to Pound uh, to edit the poem. It is also said that Elliot's wife Vivian also participated or also had a part in editing this poem. Actually, Elliot was going through many misfortunes in his life. He himself was suffering from some mental illness and physical illness too. He was advised to take rest and that time he wrote this. He was also uh, bearing the illness of his wife and the nerve shattering effects of the world war. Till then the first world war had shaken the complete world. Therefore it gave him the food for thought to write this poem. The poem is about 440 lines and it has got five parts. It is very incoherent in nature. The lines are so varied from each other, taking the references abruptly from any a poet of the past. The references they erupt in between. The reader should be well read, should know all the readings, all the books, all the references of the past also. Then only he would be able to grasp the meaning. That's why I'm here to explain you each and every line. But before that, I would like to give you the mythological background of the poem. So let's begin with the mythological background of this poem, The Wasteland. 
the poem was as i already told you the poem was published in 1922 but initially it was published as a serial form in criterion in october 1922 and then the dial uh, in november 1922 wasteland is a long and complex poem it brings various mythological characters into consideration it amalgamates the present and the past and it poses various images instant images which you are required to understand it also brings forth the christian faith in the poet he reveals his christian faith and philosophy and of course the eastern faith and philosophy is also combined in the poem in the last part we will be doing each part gradually but first of all you should understand the myths taken in what provoked him to write this what were the various mythological stories which held elliot to write these beautiful lines and compose a masterpiece in literature the first mythological story is taken from jesse watson's from rituals to romance and it says that uh, when christ was crucified his blood tickling blood was collected in a grail the same grail in which he had the last supper so this grail and this blood it automatically became miraculous and had some medicinal powers and it was kept in the church and from there one day suddenly it got missing so it is said that the knights looked went out in search for it the bold knights and they many of them they lost their lives so uh, it was seen only to the knight who had this virginal purity they used to witness it in the sky uh, like a saucer so uh, it was also kept with the lance lance which was uh, which helped in piercing the body during the crucifixion of christ so this lance and this grail became uh, the symbol of male and female fertility so when it got lost the land became infertile it was considered as a grave sin therefore the land had to suffer uh, infertility impotency misery diseases and all these things because uh the actual sex was denied it function it was only done like the animal copulation so all these symbols grail and lands and fertility all these are connected to the life of christ and he was crucified therefore man committed a grave sin and when the grail was lost that was more graver than crucifying christ and because of these sins the land became a waste land so purity medicinal powers sanctity all these symbols are connected to christ and his life and when man committed grave sins the land became infertile people became impotent and there were so many diseases everywhere the second story narrates the episode of king fisher he was a very generous ruler and in his kingdom lies the perilous church where the grail was worshiped so during his rule some of his soldiers they committed a heinous crime by outraging the chastity of some nuns and after this the curse fell on the land and the king the king became a physical wreck impotent unfertile and the whole kingdom was changed into a desert thing barren and full of diseases full of uh, miseries and misfortunes so again it was said that until and unless this crime was repented the penance is being paid nothing will bring change in his kingdom 
Also, when any knight of virginal purity crossed the star cross system, this kingdom will regain fertility. So it needed the penance and someone with purity will come to the land to redeem the sins of King Fisher and his soldiers. The third story is of King Oedipus, the king of Thebes. And we all know that when he was born, there was a prophecy or the forecast that he would kill his father and marry his mother unknowingly. So when his parents came to know this, he was abandoned. He was taken by a shepherd to some other king and queen who had no children and as destiny had to prove itself, it had all the same. He did kill his father and married his own mother and this heinous crime of his changed the kingdom into a barren land and he himself became important. His, again, his land was uh, visited by so many diseases and misfortunes. But when he tried to find out the reason behind this, it was very difficult for him to accept that he himself was the reason for all this misfortune, all the misery. And who told him about this? The blind prophet Tarsius. Tarsius revealed the secret of his birth and the prophecy. Tarsus was a man who lived in the past and who is there in the present. He is the protagonist of Elit's poem, The Wasteland. The connecting link of Elit's poem. Please watch the play Oedipus. I'm giving the link here. I've made the animation of it and you would, I hope you would like it. Let's discuss the mythological stories behind uh, Tiresias also. So Tiresias when young uh, accidentally saw goddess Dinah bathing naked and when the goddess noticed she struck him blind. What because uh, the mother of Tiresias was a friend of the goddess, she pleaded her for her son. So Dinah gave him immortality and the gift of prophecy. But then he remained blind forever. He was immo made immortal, that's why he's in the present also. The another story of Tarsius says that once he was just going uh, through the forest and accidentally disturbed two uh, snakes copulating and those snakes out of rage made him a woman. So he lived a vi uh, life of a woman for seven years and again disturbed two snakes in the same position and those snakes, they made him a man again. So he was a man, changed into a woman, lived for seven years as a woman and then became a man again. So the god and goddess, Ju uh, Jove and Juno, they asked him, that who was more passionate since he had lived the life of both as a male and as a female. So he said that female is more passionate and this made Juno angry. She struck him blind and Jove was very happy and he gave him the uh, gifts of immortality and prophecy. So there are various stories behind all these uh, mythological figures and all these uh, stories are incorporated somewhere or the other in the uh, poem of T.S. Eliot, Wasteland. That's why I have given you the background of these stories in order to understand the poem. In our next section, we will be taking line to line uh, the wasteland. So keep your text ready. If you like my effort, please like, comment, share and subscribe and also hit the bell button to get the updates regularly. Take care. Bye-bye.